a haul video. I didn't, I'm not really doing much for Halloween today, so um, I'm actually going to share with you everything I got because I had some appointments this morning and then I went and did some running around. I went to two Dollar Trees. I went to Five Below. Um, I had to go drop some books back off at the library. I had to run to the bank. Um, what else did I do? Where else did I go? Went to two Dollar Trees, Five Below. I took my friend and I took my friend to the grocery store. Well, met her at the grocery store. And I went to, where else did I go? Oh yeah, the Thrifty Shopper. So, in case you don't know what Thrifty Shopper is, it's a local thrift store. I guess it's mostly in like PA, New Jersey, I believe, to everyone in New Jersey, and New York. Um, So, I'm going to show you guys what I got today. Minus the couple things I got at the grocery store, because I just got things like lunch and some oatmeal and some tea. But I'll show you what I got from the other stores. Um, so first we'll do, so at the first thrift store, so at the first Dollar Tree I went to, I got a bunch of stuff. At the second Dollar Tree I went to, I didn't get anything. Because it's pretty much all the same stuff. Didn't really have anything new or different that I couldn't live without. So from the first Dollar Tree, I got some, whoops, I got these Armor All Carve Fresheners. They are, I don't even know. They smell really good. There was three in the pack originally, but one must have fell out in the bag and the other one I already put in my car. I have these Armor All Cool Mist ones. Again, it's a three pack. For a dollar, that's not bad. For two bucks, I got six. I got... Here. I got a steering wheel cover. Can't see it right now. It's in my car. But it's kind of plush. It's a thinner one. It's blue, purple, and white. It's super cute. I'll have to show you guys at some point in time. There's the other one of these. I really don't remember what the scent is. Um, Let me see if this package shows me. Oh. Lemon berry. It smells pretty good. I'm not a huge fan of the Cool Mist ones, but it helps for when I have my girlfriend in the car, who's a heavy smoker. Or every once in a while, her boyfriend. Yeah, her boyfriend. Her brother will smoke in my car. I mean, yes, I make them have the windows down and everything because I'm a non smoker. But smoke still gets in the car. I got these yummy maple cream cookies to try. I don't know how they're going to be. I'm always iffy. I'm, I love maple, but I'm always iffy. Like, I tried maple Cheerios, and I wasn't too crazy about them. So, maybe I'll actually try one right now and see how they are. I have yet to try these. I've never seen these before. And I'm not big on, like, the fall stuff. Like, um, I'm very anti-pumpkin, except for... At two of, if you guys have a Wegmans, which I know is a big chain, or we have our more local grocery store called Weiss, they have these pumpkin cream rolls that are really good. They have, they're like these logs. It's like pumpkin cake with like cream in it. Almost like, I guess kind of like a Swiss roll type of thing. They're really good. Um... But I don't like pumpkin pie or anything. Um, I love pumpkin seeds, though. As long as they're in their shells. I can't eat them when they're not shelled. Especially homemade pumpkin seeds with garlic powder on them. Yes, they're a pain in the butt to make. But they're so good. So let's try one of these maple cookies. They're so cute. They have, like, little maple leaves on them. They're kind of like, if you look, they're kind of like a little mini blondie Oreo. So let's try it and see.
they don't have too, too much flavor, honestly. I thought they would be like overly mapley flavored. I mean, it might be because I did just burn my tongue at lunch and some soup. But no, there's not really much flavor to these. I'm surprised. Yum. They taste very similar to the, the vanilla Oreo, the Blondie Oreos. A little, they have a small hint of the maple. The next thing I got are cheese nips. I've never actually seen these at the dollar store. Usually they have like their dollar store brand. But if you don't know what cheese nips are, these are another version of cheese it's but that was really good for a dollar and i'm trying to lose weight so I'm trying to stay away from the carbs and the crackers and all that but i have no snack food in my house at all of any kind other than some like snack food that needs to be thrown out because it's stale and some pudding and frosting which is probably not the best thing to be eating you know it tastes really good then i happened upon these they're edible sand pudding with edible stickers and edible ocean. They have other ones too. They have like grass and mud at like regular grocery stores for like $1.99. These are at the dollar store for a dollar. So, so definitely stay tuned for videos of these. I will definitely be doing these in a video. And also, another thing I will possibly be doing in this vid another video is making i bought this mix for hot chocolate flavored i guess it's like a pancake slash waffle mix i've actually never made pancakes before so i might try that with you guys or i'll just do waffles because that i've done enough times i know how to use the waffle iron and do that so I'm going to try and do that in another video, since I still have yet to do those. The next place, the next, oh, here's another bag. Sorry, I forgot they bagged this separately from the dollar store. I got this book. It's called Patient HM, The Story of Memory, Madness, and Family Secrets. It kind of reminded me of, like... Grey's Anatomy, which I highly, highly, highly recommend. I just started season six. There's, I think, 15 seasons on Netflix right now. And I have see, and then they just came out with season 16 and they signed for season 17 too. But I'll read you this little monologue here of what the book is about. This book retails for $28, which I didn't realize. If you're in the U.S., 17, or 37 in Canada, and I got this at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. Go figure. You never know what you're going to find at Dollar Tree. They even had, like, po they had all sorts of cool stuff. Like, they had, they even had, like, Pokemon Go handbooks. Like, I don't know who still plays, po I mean, my girlfriend and her brother still play Pokemon, and, like, her, well, her older brother and her little brother. And her stepbrother, they all play Pokemon Go. And like her brother, her older brother's girlfriend. But not very many people play Pokemon Go anymore, surprisingly. But at this point, I think if you don't know how to play Pokemon Go, don't even bother. But, so I don't really think you need a handbook. It's basically just how to use the app and stupid crap. So here's this. In the late 1930s, in asylums and hospitals across America, a group of renowned neurosurgeons embarked on a campaign to develop and refine a new class of brain operation, the lobotomy, that they hoped would eradicate everything from schizophrenia to homosexuality. I take offense with that homosexuality part being by... Um, it's not really a choice. Homosexuality. You're not, you're born with it. It is what it is. 
I didn't choose it. I just jokingly decided one day I want to date this girl out of a joke to piss off my high school boyfriend. Well, high school fiance. This was right before we got engaged. Um, I dated the first girl I ever fell in love with, who was friends with my boyfriend. I dated her ex-girlfriend. Thought I was in the girls, wasn't really sure. Fell in love with that girl. And then, yeah. Here I am at 26. And definitely into girls. I was, in case you guys don't know this. Which most of you do. If you're a subscriber. Since the channel's really small. And most of my subscribers are family or friends. I was engaged to a girl for four years. Well, we were together four years, engaged for three and a half. Worst mistake in my life, that girl was crazy. Um, but anyways, let's get back to this. These psycho surgeons, as they call themselves, occupied a gray zone between medical research and medical practice. And end up subjecting untold numbers of people to the types of surgical experiments once limited to chimpanzees the most important test subject to emerge from this largely untold chapter in american history was a 27 year old factory worker named henry mollison in 1953 henry who suffered from severe epilepsy received a radical new version of the lobotomy one that targeted the most mysterious structures in the brain. The operations failed to eliminate Henry's seizures, but it did have an unintended effect. Henry left the operating room profoundly amnesic, unable to create new long-term memories. Over the next 60 years, patient HM, as Henry was known, became the most studied individual in the history of neuroscience. A human guinea pig who would teach us much of what we know about memory today. Luke Dittrich uses the case of patient HM as a starting point for a kaleidoscopic journey on the moves from the first recorded brain surgeries in ancient Egypt to the cutting edge laboratories of MIT he takes readers inside the old asylum and operating theaters where psychosurgeons conducted their human experiments and behind the scenes of a bitter custody battle over the ownership of the most important brain in the world. Throughout Dietrich's Devils Delves, sorry, into the enduring mysteries of the mind while exposing troubling stories of just how far we've gone in our pursuit of knowledge. It is also, at times, a deeply personal journey. Dick Turk's father was a brilliant, morally complex surgeon who operated on Mollison and thousands of other patients. The author's investigation into the dark roots of modern memories, memory science ultimately forces him to confront unsettling secrets of his own family history and reveal the tragedy. That fueled his grandfather's relentless experimentation. Experimentation that would revolutionize our understanding of ourselves. Patient H.M. combines the best of biography, memoir, and science journalism to create a haunting, endless, fascinating story. One that reveals the wondrous and devastating things that can happen when hubris, ambition, and human imperfections collide. I wonder how long this book is. I really didn't check that out while I was in the library. Or at the Dollar Tree. Whew. A lot of references. The book is 411 pages. So if you guys would like me to read this, do story time with this book, let me know. 
and I will get back to you. And I will do videos. It'll be lots and lots and lots of videos. As I said, this book is super long. There's lots of chapters. So let me know if you'd like me to do that. I will do that. The next thing I got, I'll have to stand up to show you this. I got this from Thrifty Shopper. I saw this dress. I'm big into vintage dresses lately. I saw this dress. I tried it. I didn't know if I was going to like it. I tried it on. I fell in love. I was like, I can't afford this. Like, I'm not going to pay, you know, like, I shouldn't be spending $8 on a dress. Lo and behold, blue tags were half off today. So I got it for four and change. So, if you guys come over here with me, I will show you this amazing vintage dress, which will be perfect because I haven't sold you guys in yet, but I recently got a job as a, son, as a nursery school teacher in a church on Sundays. And I thought this dress would be perfect it's got it, it's not open up there it buttons so you just see like your collarbone neckline you know so you can wear a nice piece of jewelry with it it's full length goes to my, about my ankles super cute super vintage i loved it so the next so that was what i got from there so this next stuff i got is from the Five Below, which if I had had so much more money, I could have easily spent a couple hundred dollars. Because they had so many new ponies that I didn't have. So many cute toys I wanted. A couple toys I thought about as Christmas gifts for my boyfriend's brother's girlfriend's son. So my boyfriend's brother's stepson, more or less. And even for his own two little monsters. And even for my girlfriend's two little boys. Um, but I refrained. Didn't get a lot of stuff I wanted to get. Had to put a lot back. Because as you know, I'm currently not working. So I don't have a lot of money right now. But I did splurge on two things. The one thing I just couldn't live without. And the other thing I thought would be great for you guys, and there's something I've always wanted to try that I've never seen before, only on the channel Toy Caboodle, which I highly recommend you watch if you're into box openings. Toy Caboodle and SW Tad Kids. Highly recommend both of those channels. I got this adorable Princess Luna, which I will open. And I got, so I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Five Surprise. They started out with like random little junk in there and they weren't very good at first. And they came out with the mini brands, which I actually have some of. And they have these unicorn ones that I've never seen before. Like I said, I've only ever seen them in videos and whatever. So I thought this would be a little fun treat to open with you guys today. I figured this would be a nice break from doing chores in between videos. I'm going to try and use these next today and tomorrow to film a ton of videos for you guys. Because I've been slacking and haven't been really posting videos. So let's hope. So it says, unbox a magical unicorn surprise. 13 unicorns to collect. The unicorn squad. This one's super cute. Here's a little pull tab. A little zipper, which I never seem to have the best luck with pull tabs like that. They don't tend to work very well for me. Yeah, like I said, it doesn't work very well for me ever. Then, looks like there's another clear layer on there, which I don't understand the point of that. Because if you ever open anything from this Five Surprise brand, you would know that there's a little... That this little ball is in pieces. And they put a little stopper on top. They're like little 
I guess you'd call them like little orange slices. Um, typically they're all divided evenly, but with this one, they're not because it's the pony in the bigger part and the accessories in the other part. But it has this little stopper. So first thing you do is you pull out this stopper and you're left with this. And the guide. So here's the ones you can collect. You can get, let's see, here we, right here, we'll start with this side. Number one is Aurora. She's a little Cleopatra type. We have Luna, that's the one that's on the cover. She's super cute and super colorful. And I actually really love that name because I've had sugar gliders in my lifetime. Some of my many pets I've had. And one of my sugar gliders names was Luna. Luna Marie. We have Bella. Little royal one. And this cute little one blowing bubbles. This is Pippa. We have this little the gangster type one, DJ. We have, I don't know. This one's kind of prissy, too. This is Trixie. We have, oh, that's super cute. Little mermaid. That's Coral. I really like that one. I think that's one of my favorites. We have this one. Little Asian girl, which is Jade. Which I think is super awesome. Because as a kid, I was obsessed with Geisha-style clothing. And Asian girls in general. We have Cherry, this little, like, sweet one. We have Charlotte. She's, like, little proper, like, little like, schoolgirl type. We have this Rockstar one, Roxy. We have Anastasia, the little ballerina. And we have the ultra-rare one, Shimmer. So, let's get opening and find out who... We got. So we'll save the little pony for last. Let's see. We got some little candy stickers. We got this adorable little candy hair, hair comb. Another little candy sticker. It's a gumball machine. And I really like these puffier stickers better. Well, I think this tells me who it is. Already, just by that. That was a giveaway. Oh. Okay. This is kind of cool. Came with some slime. We will have to check that out after we're all done looking at everything. Looks like we got some clothes and shoes. Let's see, we have a little hair accessory. I believe that's what that is. A little bubble. A little skirt, if you guys can see that very well. Yeah, there we go. It's got like little polka dots on it. And then we have some pink and yellow high heels. Uh oh, I'm just dropping everything. Jeez Louise. Hold on, guys. Ugh, sorry. I dropped one of the accessories. Okay, let's open this big one. Where's the little tab? So this will be the unicorn. 
and her little hair accessory. Well, her hair accessory. Her hair. So let's put this little beauty together. We have the back. Whoa, just shopping everything today. Yikes. We have the back of her head. So I'm assuming that this is where the little horn goes in through there. So it goes on just like so. Then the little clippy doodad. Right, or is that back? Yeah, that's backwards, sorry. Okay, there's her little hair piece. Look how cute. And she got her little tail, which we can comb out. Let's put on her little dress, her, well, skirt. There's what her little dress looks like. I'm gonna put on her little shoesies. One, two. Three, four. There's her adorable little shoes. you can kind of see and we'll put her little bubble in her mouth she's so stinking cute i'm definitely gonna have to get more of these when i get more money and open them for you guys let's see her name is pippa now what is you, I wonder if this tells me what the deal is with the slime. It's, um, it's not slime, it's unicorn poop. And the brand that actually made these, I'm sorry, is not Five Surprise. It's called Zero. So let's open this unicorn poop and see what that's about. Geez, they really don't want you to open this, do they? Hold on, guys. Let me go grab a pair of scissors real quick. this and I noticed there was a smell to it. This smells like bubble gum. Like, yeah. Yeah. Actually, now I smell it again. Maybe it kind of smells like juicy fruit. Let's take this out and see. Whoa. Okay, this is really weird. Wow. Um. Okay, I've never felt anything quite like this before. Never seen slime like this before. It sure does get stuck to everything. Wow. Okay. 
I don't recommend this slime for children under the age of five. And this makes a huge mess. Okay. And it doesn't really tell me much about the slime, the unicorn poop. Yeah, it smells just like juicy fruit. It's got like a, wow, really like gummy, it's really fluffy, but it acts a lot like bubble gum. I wonder if you can blow bubbles in this. No? Hmm. Let's try. Let's see if we can blow bubbles in this like you used to with Silly Putty back in the day. Ugh. Yeah, you can't really blow bubbles with this. Well, that's kind of disappointing. I'll just put that back in there. Okay, that was kind of weird. Next, let's open this Princess Luna. what this is about. So she comes with a comb. As do most ponies nowadays that have hair. And let's take her out. So she's iridescent. She's these really pretty, I don't know if you can see them very well, but these really pretty, like, stars on, or moons on them. And her little crown comes off. And she's got really pretty blue hair and the wings. I'm just got her little cutie mark back there. She's really cool. Okay. Well, that was my haul for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully, I'll be able to make more videos soon for you guys. Have fun. Have a good day and a safe Halloween. Bye, guys.